clutch, bro, but Hare Krishna Prabhu. Please accept my humble wish since he's all glory, Shri Prabhupada. Accept mine too, all glory, Shri Prabhupada. Nice to meet all of you again. So someone want to chant the praise? Hare Krishna, Prabhu, can I chant? Chant, please chant. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva Yam Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva Yam Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva Yam Om Agnana Timirandasya Gananjana Chalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dharati Svaparantikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Yutapada Kamalam Sri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Sri Rupam Sagrijatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savarutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Visakan Vitamscha E Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Pando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneswari Vrisabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Haripriye Vancha Kalpata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Pyaevacha Patita Nampa Vanepyo Vaishnavepyo Namu Namaha Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Veranta Swami Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Pashadaya Deshatarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Kadadara Sri Vachari Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Jai Shri Prabhupada. Thank you. Where is our, our oh, host? Huh? He's not in yet. <laughs> uh, Manu Prabhu told me that today he cannot join for some reason. He had some service. And he is, he is I think, uh, on the road or something, traveling to some place. Yes, Prabhu. Yes, so uh, Priti Goranga is he coming on or not? <clears throat> I'm not sure because Manu Prabhu told me that if I can open the Zoom Zoom meeting and start... oh, he told you to organize it. Huh? Okay, good then. Yes, sir. Because today is Shivaratri and our devotees here all are going on a Sankirtan marathon all mm -hmm. night. <laughs> so I don't think they will be available much of them. Yes, also all the Indian devotees are in Vrindavan right now with Prahlad Prabhu. <coughs> oh, I see. Hmm. So today he has a question, how can I advance? Are they recording this thing? Recorded, huh? Yes, Prabhu. How can I advance in my spiritual life if Lord Shiva is in the expansion of Krishna? Then why can't we serve him? <clears throat> so it is says here that Lord Shiva is act although he's an expansion of Krishna, but he's still in the category of a demigod, you know. Huh? 
and uh, we are explicitly told not to worship demigods you know that's uh, because we are not very advanced then we can always kind of uh, you know fall in the trap of trying to seek favors from the demigods you see so okay. that is dangerous for our spiritual life you know So in this verse here, it's been specifically advised in two places in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that a devotee cannot worship demigods, you know. A pure devotee must not cherish any desire other than to serve Krishna. He should not offer. You see here, very important, huh? Yes, Prabhu. He should not offer worship to the demigods or to mundane personalities. You see that point there? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So this is very important, you see. We have to follow uh, system given by the acharyas no <clears throat> hmm? yes bro yes because if you try to do whatever you want to do then it is not different from being a hindu you know yeah? yes definitely <laughs> yes Prabhu. so what's the difference then hmm? again here also it is said here See that here again? The devotee should not worship demigods, nor should he disrespect them. Yes? Yes, probably. Yeah. Very clear. Hmm. So although today is Shivaratri, well, I, I don't say you, because when I was first joining up in our calendar, it was uh, fasting for Shivaratri, optional, we put there, you can or cannot do, you know. So, but Prabhupada was stressing very strongly uh, against demigod worship. Because when you worship demigods, then you can always get sidetracked, you know. Especially when you ask for material favors then your faith will become stronger with the demigod than with Krishna, is he? Yes, Prabhu, yes. And that is not good for you spiritually, as Krishna also said, you know, worshipping other gods is done in a wrong way, no? <coughs> you see here, Devata, Devata means, Devata Bhakta means worship of demigods, huh? Yes, Prabhupada. See, Prabhupada write Devata as gods, you know, other gods, you know. You see here? Those who worship, <coughs> those who are devotees, other gods, you know, worship them with faith actually worship only Mausana, but they do so in a wrong way, you know. Mm. Yes. So Krishna himself is discouraging, you know, why you want to do this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that does not mean we disrespect them. That's not a fact, you know. Understand? Okay. Mm. Mm? 
So because demigod worship, demigod worship cannot bring about devotion. You know, there's another misconception. Despite the cultivation of Vedic knowledge is unlimited and the worship of different demigods by the symptom of Vedic mantra. Demigod worship, you see here. <coughs> does not help one to understand the supreme, powerful personality of Godhead. Yes, very clear. Yeah. So, you know, we... we <laughs> I mean, it's not that we are against, you know, but we are just quoting the scriptures, no? Yes? Yes, Prabhu, yes. Definitely. In fact, Lord Shiva says, you know, anyone who is a devotee uh, of uh, Krishna is very dear to him. Yes, uh, so we can please him by being a devotee of Krishna. Yes. But he never say anyone who is my devotee is very dear to me. He never say that. Yes, yes. Huh? You understand? Yes, I understand. Thank you. Then uh, uh, for the pre uh, the first question, uh, how do, do we advance in uh, spiritual life? Can you read this? Yes. Lord Shiva continued, any person who is surrendered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, the controller of everything, material nature, as well as the living entity, is actually very dear to me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, says here, Bhagavantam Vasudevam. See? Yes, yes, Prabhu. So try to understand, you know, how to go about doing this. You have to learn from the spiritual master. Mm. We can try to, you know, just the problem behind being a Hindu, you know, you do anything and everything, you know. You go to their altar, millions of gods are on the altar. Huh? <laughs> yes, Prabhu. <laughs> right? Yes, Sai Baba, Alibaba, all kind of crazy characters are all there. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so. <laughs> they don't have a spiritual master, therefore they don't know. And mm. all, the, all their nonsense is on getting material benefits. That's all it is. Yes, it's true. Mm. But material benefit cannot take you back to God, you know. It's true. <laughs> and most of the time, they're all are doing, breaking all the principles. They're meat eaters. They're doing all nonsense. Huh? Yes, yes, Prabhu. Yes. What is the use, you know? <clears throat> you understand? Yes, yes. So, therefore, we have to do it properly. So, here it has been clearly told we don't have to worship demigods, you know. Mm. Very clear, yes. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. What the difference between the self-satisfaction that should be avoided mentioned in Bhagavad Gita 1823 so forth, and being satisfied in the self only stated in Bhagavad Gita in 317. Okay, we will go self-satisfaction in 1823.
I, I don't see anything here. 1823, he says no. Yes, Prabhu, in this purport that says without without self-satisfaction or self self-gratification. Oh here, yeah, without self-satisfaction. So here it means that you want to do it for your material interest, you know. Yes. Yeah? It is not for offering it to Krishna, is it? Yeah? Yes, Prabhu. Yes. And so this self-satisfaction is more of a sense gratification than anything else. Yes, Prabhu. So here, Atma Triptas. So here, <clears throat> it referring for relating with the soul. The soul can only be happy when he comes back to his constitutional position as servant of Krishna. Yes, Prabhu. You understand? So self-satisfaction means to enjoy the senses and that you get into a lot of trouble, you know? Yes, Prabhu. But when you do really satisfy yourself with being a servant of Krishna, the self-interest is to become, to realize that you're actually a servant of Krishna. Huh? Yes, bro. Yeah, this that is that is really satisfying the self. That's why I said, if you have come to Krishna consciousness, then there is no more duty for you. Yes, bro. But when you don't come to Krishna consciousness, then you are implicated. Yes, definitely. Anything done not for Krishna, Bhagavad Gita, you know. In fact, you can see just before this one verse before. My dear Arjuna, one who does not follow in the human life the cycle of sacrifice that is established in the Vedas suddenly leads a life full of sin. Living only for the satisfaction sense of such a person lives in vain. Mm. Yes, Prabhu. So when you don't want to serve Krishna, then your whole life will be full of pain, no? Yes, Prabhu. Uh, but when you do work for Krishna, then you are fully satisfied. Everything is okay. You understand? Yes, Prabhu. So the self-satisfaction was meaning satisfying the senses. Yes, and becoming spiritually satisfied only when you become servant of Krishna. Yes, Prabhu. Hmm. That's why it says, no, Jivere Swarupa Hoi Krishna Renitya Das. So if you want to really become happy, then you must become a servant of Krishna. Only then you can become very happy. Yes, Prabhu. Anything other than that is temporary, you know. Uh? Yes, Prabhu. I think this is really clear now. Thank you, Prabhu. Mm -hmm. What is the other question? Biggest challenge is to remain constantly in bhakti. We read Prabhupada book lectures, but somehow or other, somehow Maya traps us by 
been attractive, how can we overcome that moment we feel attracted to Maya? <clears throat> okay. So, to, in order to overcome this thing, you know, that's why we have to practice our spiritual life very strongly, you know, very seriously. Huh? Otherwise, you know, we will become victim to Maya. Huh? Yes, here. From this, we can understand now we have to be very cautious in executing our spiritual duties by observing the rules and regulations, regularly chanting Hare Krishna Mahamant. If we neglect doing this, we will eventually fall down. Huh? Yes, Prince. See? We must rise early in the morning, bathe, attend Mangala Arati, worship the deity, chant the Hare Krishna mantra, study the Vedic literature and follow all the rules prescribed by the Acharyas and the spiritual master. If we deviate from this process, we may fall down, even though we may be very highly advanced. <clears throat> so in order to be <coughs> safe from Maya, there are two things we have to do, chant Hare Krishna, read Prabhupada books, associate with the bodhis, uh, try to only take Krishna Prasadam, try to stay uh, near a holy place. Hmm? So if we do this, then our Krishna consciousness will become very much, I would say, protected, you know. Yes, please. Uh, but if we don't have this support, then our mind will become agitated, <clears throat> especially when we eat contaminated food, you know. Yes, yeah, we are what we eat, you know. The moment we eat contaminated food, our mind will become disturbed, you know. That's why we are always recommending that you always take Krishna Prasadam. You know? Yes. If you don't eat Krishna Prasadam, then the tongue, you know, difficult to control. Even if you chant Hare Krishna and you eat contaminated food, then you will also fall down, you know. And so the food plays a very big role. And if we can safeguard, then that should be no problem. Yes. So the how to overcome the moment we feel attracted to Maya, then the best way is to uh, if you can talk to a devotee or if you can chant Hare Krishna, this will be very helpful. Yes. You can take association of devotees at that time, it will be good. If you cannot, you, of course, now you can always call and talk to the devotees also. <clears throat> hmm? Yes. The devotees are available, they will be very good. <laughs> The moment you approach a devotee, then no Maya can come, no? Yes, please. If you keep talking to your mind, then the mind will cleverly delude us, you know? Yes. The mind is very powerful, you know? Yes, please. The uncontrolled mind is the greatest enemy of the living entity. If one neglects it or gives it a chance, it will grow more and more powerful and will become victorious. Although it is not factual, it is very strong. It covers the constitutional position of the soul. O King, please try to conquer this mind by the weapons of service to the laws of feet of the spiritual master and of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Do this with great care. See? <clears throat> 
So unless you really uh, you can come out of this, then that's the best. Hmm? If you cannot, then it's going to be very difficult, no? Yes, Mahaji. Especially when you're overpowered by your mind, no? Yes, Mahaji. So you see, Kama Dinam. So you see this verse. Oh my Lord, there is no limit to the unwanted orders of lusty desires. Although I have rendered this desire so much service, they have not shown me any mercy to me. <clears throat> nor have I not been ashamed to serve them. Nor have I ever even desired to give them up. Oh my Lord, O oh head of the Yadu dynasty. Recently, uh, this is important. Recently, our, my intelligence has been awakened. Huh? And now I'm giving them up. Due to transcendental intelligence, I now refuse to obey the unordered, unwanted orders of this desire. And I have now come to you to surrender myself. <coughs> surrender myself at your fearless lotus feet. Kindly engage me in your personal service and save me. So this is the method, you know. The method is to go to Krishna hmm, and engage in Krishna's service, you know. Then this Maya will be overcome. Yes. You understand? Yes, Prabhupada. So they said Krishna is like the sun, you know. And Maya is darkness. Wherever there is the Krishna sun, there is no question of darkness, no? Yes, Prabhupada. So how to become Krishna conscious, that is our whole program, you know. So how to do that is not that we will be always remembering Krishna all day unless we are a pure devotee. But in the beginning stage, it's going to be a big challenge. So therefore, it is advised that we practice our sadhana very strictly, you know, wake up, chanting Hare Krishna. Huh? Yes, Prabhupada. Then immediately we will get protection by the blessing of the spiritual master. Yes, sir. But if we don't do this program in the morning especially, then it's very easy to fall down, even though we are very highly advanced, no? Yes. Glory Prabhupada, how to get to Nama Bas stage and get Sudhanam, chanting Hare Krishna, Mahamantra. First thing first, no, you must first follow the program, no? Yes. Everybody want to go immediately to see God, that's uh, quite a challenge, no? So the first step is explain here. In the beginning there must be faith, then one must become interested in associating with pure devotees. And thereafter one is initiated by the spiritual master and executes the regulative principle under his order. And thus one is free from all unwanted habits and firm, becomes firmly fixed in devotional service. <coughs> Thereafter one develops taste and attachment 
This is the way of sadhana bhakti, the execution of devotional service according to regulating principle. Gradually emotion intensify and finally there is an awakening of love. This is the gradual development of love of God for the devotee interested in Krishna consciousness. So first thing first, no, you have to try to get yourself <coughs> connected to the parampara by getting initiated. Okay. Then as you get connected, then gradually you develop stage by stage by stage. Hmm. It is not that I start chanting today and tomorrow I become a Narada Muni or something, you know. Huh? Is it possible? Correct? So we have to learn how to be patient, surrender. As Krishna says, I, as you surrender, I reward accordingly. Correct? Hmm? So you're not even surrendered yet. You don't even have a guru. Then how is it possible? Yes? yes Who is this asking this question? Dharani Bharati. Eh? Where are you from? Are you there? Tamil Nadu. Oh, you are there. Huh? Very good. Where are you from? Tamil Nadu. Ah, so you try to go to our temple now? Huh? <clears throat> Associate with our devotees and learn the process. Hmm? Yes. Then, yes, a good interest. You have a desire to chant very purely. That is good desire. Hmm? Yes. So, how to execute it, you must learn. No? Hmm? Yes. Hmm. So, you go to our temple. I think we have a temple in Tamil Nadu, in Pondicherry. No? Yes. Which city are you from? Trichy, yeah? Okay, very good. Not far away, huh? Try to go, huh? I, can you list your number? Are they, Are you with them now? In your in the group? Oh, very good. He's in the group. Oh, very good. So good. You guy help him, huh? Help him to go to our temple and then he can associate and stay a few days if you can. That'll be very nice. Hmm? Association is very, very important, you know. Even we are advanced also, we still need to associate with devotees. Without association, very difficult to make progress. You know? Of course, online and online is very nice, but, you know, at some point, you know, they, even now, I think all those who are working from home, they are asked to go back to work from office, no? Huh? Why don't they make a permanent home, work from home? <laughs> At some point it's not possible. You have to associate now. Correct? Even the materialists realize that. What more for the spiritual program? Correct? Yes. Hmm. So you try. You try to go and associate. Huh? Any other questions? Can I ask one more question, please? Yes. Uh, it's for Mataji uh, in Reunion Island. Uh, I I will um, read the is uh, her question for you. Okay. So she she said some something is bothering bothering me. Why did Srila Prabhupada always speak for men about liberation of men? I'm lost about what do I have to do as a woman? Am I not eligible as a woman for liberation? Please, if you could help me to find uh, some, where is my place? Hmm. This is her question. The first thing is you know, in spiritual life is that you understand that you're not a woman. <clears throat> hmm? Here, Krishna says this word, woman. Huh? Sh 
three means woman, no? Yes. 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 So son of Prita, those who take shelter in me, although they be lower birds, uh, women, Vaishyas, Sudras, is can attain the supreme destination. So there's no bar if you are a woman or a man or even animal also. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he delivered many animals also. Yes, Prabhu. Hmm. So the whole idea is first to understand that you are a spirit soul. If you keep yourself in the womanly concept, then you are still in the bodily concept. Huh? Yeah. <clears throat> so if you keep yourself in the bodily concept, Anyone who is specifically favored by the Supreme Lord, the personality of God, due to unalloyed surrender unto the service of the Lord, can overcome the insurmountable ocean of illusion and can understand the Lord. But those who are attached to the body, which is meant to be eaten at the end by dogs and jackals, cannot do so. You understand? Yes, bro. So you have to now upgrade yourself to the point. That's why this is the first lesson in the Bhagavad Gita that Krishna spoke to Arjuna and said, you are not this body. You are a spirit soul. Mm. This is first step, yeah. Yes. Mm. So when yes. you understand a spirit soul, and of course, owing to some problem, we are now trapped in this body. What to do? That's our karma. We made a mistake. Huh? But you can overcome this mistake because when you know that you are a servant of Krishna and you are a spirit soul, then you can develop, <clears throat> you can get initiated, that woman also can get initiated, there's no, no law saying barring them from getting initiation, yes, huh? they can also serve the spiritual master according to their means, yes, they can also learn how to preach, there's so many things they can do, Prabhupada has liberalized many things for the women, yes, so where is the, where is the problem? But if you maintain yourself as a woman and act only on that platform uh, and not understanding their higher nature, then that's going to be a problem. Mm. Yes, Prabhu. Yes. It says here, but those who are attached to the body, you cannot understand Krishna, you're not possible. Yes, Prabhu. You understand? Yes. So, <clears throat> that's why we need to have association, either man, woman, whatever, everyone needs association. It doesn't mean that the woman, the means I, I go and mix with the man freely or what. No, no, there are also rules governing association, how the woman should act, how the man should act, how the household yeah. should act, how the sannyasi should act, how the you know, brahmachari should act, all their stipulations on the order. So we follow those guidelines because trapped in this body, we cannot say, look, I throw away my clothes, I'm a spirit soul and walk around. No, that, that's not possible. No? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So we have guidelines. Although I'm a spirit soul, now I'm trapped in this woman's body. Right? Nonetheless, I will act, you know, yeah, accordingly, yeah, to improve my spiritual standards. I wake up in the morning, I chant my rounds, I take prasadam. Of course, I don't freely talk to all the men, but I can also talk to the women. All right, I can do whatever I can do in my woman's body, right? Yeah, mm. services possible, correct? Huh? Yes, <clears throat> So there are guidelines to do. So you tell her like that. Okay. Is she listening to this class? No, oh. she cannot because she gets family. Okay, you uh, can encourage her. Hmm? She no bar. Hmm? I will. I will, I will, I will thank you for being precise and quote. They can 
I can explain to her. Yes, you help her, guide her. Hmm? First thing first, let her chant and understand that not the body, a servant of Krishna. Hmm? Yes. All right. <clears throat> so, who arranges our karma? Next question here. Yeah. The living entity by nature has minute independence to choose his own good or bad fortune. <coughs> hmm? When he forgets his supreme master, the personality got it, he gives himself up to the modes of material nature. When influenced by the modes of nature, he identifies with the body and for the interest of the body becomes attached to various activities. Sometimes under the influence of mode of ignorance, sometimes the mode of passion, and sometimes the mode of goodness. Living and thirst get different types of body under the modes of material nature. So who influences your karma? You're given free choice, no? Yes? Huh? So if you chose yourself to be in the mode of ignorance, then you will act accordingly? Or passion, you act correct. Can you do sinful work? And you're going to get sinful karma? Yes. But if you come to the mode of goodness and then to pure goodness, you become free from karma. If you take to Krishna consciousness, better still, you're no more involved in all this karmic action. Correct. So you got your choice, minute independence. So if you want to go this way, then the reaction is like that. If you go another way to Krishna, then again, your reaction is different. Yes. So under the guidance of the modes of material nature, you become accordingly implicated. Huh? So, who influences? In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it says, that <coughs> the Supreme Personality of God it said under the supervision of the Supreme Lord and according to the result of his work, the living entity, the soul, is made to enter into the womb of woman through the particle of male semen to assume a particular type of body. Under the supervision of the Supreme Lord uh, and the according, according to the result of his work. So it is all coordinated by the Supreme Lord through his agency, Maya. Yes? So who decides? Ultimately, the Lord decides. Because he's sitting in the heart of the living entity. Yes?
the living entity in material nature follows the ways of life enjoying the three modes of nature thus due to the association with that material nature thus he meets with good evil among various species and how this is met <coughs> Yet in this body, there's another transcendental enjoyer, who is the Lord, the supreme proprietor, who exists as the overseer and permitter, and who is known as the super soul. So who decides? The Lord decides, sitting in the heart, he is witnessing, and is also permitter, arranges. Yes. If there is no happiness in the material world, then how can it be said that those who are in the mode of goodness experience happiness? We never say there is no happiness in the material world. We say the happiness here is temporary. So there are different degrees of happiness. Uh, <clears throat> that happiness that gives you immediate uh, Hmm? Explain in the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. So here, yeah. <clears throat> that which is beginning may be like poison, but the end is nectar. Hmm? And before we go, let's read this one first. Eh? Oh, Basil Bharata, now please hear from me about the three kinds of happiness by which the conditioned soul enjoys and which he sometimes come to the end of all distress. So what are the three kinds of happiness? In the beginning, that which in the beginning may be just like poison, but the end is like nectar and which awakens one to self-realization is said to be happiness in the mode of goodness. Huh? That happiness which is derived from contact of the senses with the objects and which appear like nectar at first, but poison in the end is said to be of the nature of passion. Hmm? And that happiness which is blind to self-realization, which is a delusion from beginning to end, which arises from sleep, laziness, illusion, is said to be in the mode of, of the nature of ignorance. So there's three kinds of happiness in the material world, but they are not permanent, they're temporary. Hmm? But you want to get unlimited happiness, Huh? See the word here, susukam. Hmm? Very happy. Yeah. This knowledge is the king of education, the most secret of all secret is the purest knowledge and gives you direct perception of self life. It is the perfection of religion. It is everlasting and is joyfully performed. So this happiness of serving the Lord, uh, it is an eternal happiness, unending. Hmm? So which happiness you want? <coughs> hmm?
Lord Rishabh, Dev told his son, my dear boys, of all the living entities who have accepted material body in this world, one who has been awarded this human form should not work hard day and night simply for sense gratification, which is available even for dogs or for hawks that eat stool. One should engage in penance and austerity to attain the divine position of devotional service. By such activity, one heart is purified. And when one attains this position, he attains eternal blissful life, which is transcendental to material happiness and which continues forever. Huh? So this is coming to transcendental position. Material goodness gives you some pleasure, you know, at least better than passion and ignorance. But spiritual happiness it is unlimited. Yes. Uh, and it also says here, Therefore, any person who seriously desires real happiness must seek a bona fide spiritual master and take shelter of him by initiation. The qualification of a bona fide guru is that he has realized the conclusion of scriptures by deliberation and is able to convince others of this conclusion. Such great personalities who have taken shelter of the Supreme Godhead, leaving aside all material condition should be understood be bona fide spiritual master but this is the real happiness <clears throat> hmm? yes so So you must understand what is temporary happiness and what is real happiness. Yes. Hmm? There's prior to this verse. You try to get happiness. <clears throat> <coughs> yeah. Prabhuda said, accepting the roles of male and female in human society, the conditions all unite in sexual relationship. That they constantly make material endeavors to eliminate the unhappiness, unlimitedly <coughs> increase their pleasure, where one could should see that they are inevitable achieve exactly the opposite result. In other words, the happiness inevitable vanishes and as they grow older their material discomfort increases so it is material happiness yeah. yes something that I'm going to do huh? <clears throat> Getting money is happiness. Wealth is a perpetual source of distress, is more difficult to acquire and is virtual death for the soul. Therefore, 
What satisfaction does one actually gain from his wealth? Similarly, how can one enjoy any genuine happiness from these things, from those things that are gained or maintained by one's hard-earned money, such as home, children, relatives, and domestic animals, since they all are temporary? So either sex pleasure or money, or some people think going to the spiritual uh, material happen, heavenly planet is happiness. One cannot find permanent happiness even on the heavenly planet, which one can attain in next life by ritualistic ceremonies and sacrifice. Even in material heaven, the living entity is disturbed by rivalry with his equal and envy for those superior to him. And since one's resident in heaven is finished with the exhaustion of pious activities, fruitive activities, the denizens of heaven are afflicted by fear, anticipating the destruction of their heavenly life. Thus they resemble kings who, though enviously and admired by ordinary citizens, are constantly harassed by enemy kings and who therefore never attain actual happiness. Hmm? So the real happiness is to get to the lotus feet of Krishna. And for that, we need to surrender to a pure devotee, Guru. That's why I read that verse. Real happiness is to seek shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. Yes. But at least going to goodness is a step in the right direction that will eventually bring you to the transcendental goodness. And that transcendental goodness, uh, This is what it is, uh, coming to the transcendental position. One who thus transcendentally situated at one realize the Supreme Brahman and become fully joyful. He never laments or desire to have anything. He is equally disposed to every living entity. In that stage, he attained pure devotional service unto me. <clears throat> so coming to our spiritual position, Brahman, that we are understanding that we are servant of Krishna, then we become very happy, fully joyful. Hmm? Can Bhagavad Gita, as it is, answer all of our questions, or must we read all of Prabhupada books for answers to all of us? No. You can, whatever question you have, you can read Prabhupada books and find the answers there. But if you find, you cannot find, then you approach the devotees who have found the answers, that they can help you and show you also the relevant, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, what we say, supporting evidences from the scriptures. Yes, the duty of someone you approach is to enlighten you. Enlighten means he frees you from non-enlightenment stage. That means your uh, confused stage. How he does that? He must show you evidences from the Sastra. But if you can read Prabhupada books and find the answer, oh, that's very good, if you can. Otherwise, you can also approach the other devotees. Yes. Hmm? 
That's why he said that now you must approach a bona fide spiritual master who is thoroughly conversant with all the scriptural knowledge and who can enlighten the other devotees. Yes? You read earlier, no? So all doubts. That's why Krishna again asked Arjuna, all your doubts gone? Krishna, Arjuna said, yes, I'm clear of all doubts. Hmm? So if you can find the answer in Prabhupada, Prabhupada said to them, all the answers are in my books. So if you do not know, then you approach someone who can help you. Yes? You cannot go to someone who cannot help you, then what's the use? <clears throat> Why won't the government promote book distribution as a suicide prevention strategy? Because if the governments are all, what did they say, the word? Huh? Secular. If all the governments are secular, how they will promote any religious uh, doctrine? They will not do. Correct? So it's our duty to help the others. That's why Krishna gives the job to the devotees. The job of the devotee is to preach. Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18, text 68 and 9, anyone who preaches this message is very dear to me. Yes. So our duty is to do that. And the government are very difficult. Most of the governments, are, unless you get Yudhishthira as the king, then yeah, that's another thing. But how many governments have got Yudhishthira as the head? <clears throat> hmm? Yes. Even if you can function already in the country, that's good enough. If they don't give you any hassle. You know. yeah. Most governments are giving so many problems to the devotees. Yes, and if we preach strongly, then some people will benefit. Hmm? <coughs> Is it all right to associate with Godema devotees? Prabhupada never wanted that. Prabhupada said that they uh, they can always do harm to us. So he told us specifically to avoid them. Early days they were going there and they were trying to reinitiate Prabhupada disciples. And they're also doing the Narayan Maharaj camp, they are reinitiating all Prabhupada disciples also. They're trying, Prabhupada said, uh, if they just say one word against me, then the whole thing is finished. And mind you, they don't have one word to say, and they got so many things to say about Prabhupada. Though. So if you go to a place, and you're going to hear all this kind of a criticism. It's going to be dangerous for our spiritual life. Huh? Yes. So even though they are Vaishnavas, it's better not to go. So here you can read this.
Friendship should be cemented between persons with mutual interest and understanding. Such persons are said to be Swajadi or of the same caste. Devotees should avoid a person whose character is not fixed in the standard understanding, even though he may be a Vaishnava or a devotee of Krishna. If his character is not correctly representative, then he should be avoided. One should steadily control the senses and the mind, strictly follow the rules and regulation, and should make friendship with persons of the same standard. Yes? Hmm? I'm sure you will agree that Godamad is not of the same standard. Can I chant the Vishnu Mantra instead of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra? I was instructed to chant Vishnu Mantra in the Brugu Samhita. So you I advise in the Vishnu Mantra in the Brugu Samhita. Then you read the some Puranas and then you'll find that you should chant some Kali Mantra. Huh? Then you read some other Purana and some other mantras are there. So what? How do you how you justify all this? How? Therefore, it says that you must have a guru, and you must follow the order of the guru. You cannot try to go read the books and figure this out. That's not the way. Huh? You must specifically chant the mantra given by the spiritual master. In our case. We are following Prabhupada, who is following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is teaching everybody to chant this Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Hmm? So here, Lord Shiva addressed his wife Durga, O Var Varanane, I chant the holy name of Rama, 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 and thus enjoy this beautiful sound. This holy name of Rama is equal to 1,000 holy names of Lord Vishnu. Hello? <clears throat> And thus, the pious result of chanting, derived from chanting the thousand holy names of Vishnu, three times can be attained by only one utterance of the holy name of Krishna. So, thousand name of Vishnu is equal to three names of Ram is equal to one name of Krishna. Hello? Huh? This verse is from the Brahmananda Puran found in the Lagu Bhagavad Muta. Rupa Goswami is simply by chanting the holy name of Ram, once one can attain the same pious result achieved by chanting the thousand holy names of Vishnu. Similarly, simply by chanting the holy name of Krishna, once one can attain the same result achieved by chanting the holy name of Ram three times. 
So which one you want to do? This is from the Acharyas. Yes. Hello. Which mantra you want to chant? Huh? According to this statement, as such, the glories of the holy name of Krishna are unlimited. Still, I should not chant his holy name. Still, I could not chant it. Please hear the reason for this. My worshipful Lord has been Lord Ramachandra, and by chanting his holy name, I receive happiness. Because I received such happiness, I chanted the holy name of Lord Ram day and night. <clears throat> By your appearance, Lord Krishna's holy name also appeared. And at that time, the glories of Krishna's name awoke in my heart. Since you are that Lord Krishna himself, this is my conclusion. Saying this, the Brahmana fell down at the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So anyone who follows Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then he must chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Yes you cannot concoct an Acharya Upasana we must follow the Acharyas we cannot try to figure this out by our own speculative methods Yes huh? you understand Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that Bhavunam Janmanamante Jnanam So Prabhu, how does he apply for impersonalists? Do they have to wait for mercy of a pure devotee? O oh, great learned devotee, although there are many faults in the material world, there is one good opportunity, the association with devotees. Such association brings about great happiness. Due to this good quality, our strong desire to achieve liberation by merging into Brahman of Fulgen has become weakened. Yes, only by association of devotees it is possible. Otherwise, it is not possible. Yes. Hmm? Who are the pure devotees mentioned in an assembly of pure devotees? There is no question of discussing material subjects like politics and sociology. In an assembly of pure devotees, there is discussion only of the qualities, form, and pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is praised and worshipped with full attention. 
in association of pure devotees by constantly hearing such topics respectfully. Even a person who wants to merge into the existence of the Absolute to abandon this idea and gradually becomes attached to the service of Vasudeva. Yes. Hmm? So unless he gets the track to do service to a pure devotee, associate with a pure devotee, it's not possible for anyone in the impersonal level to get the mercy of Krishna. Not possible. Yes. <clears throat> In the Vedas is written, there are five paths to such the, to reach the same supreme Saurya. Worship of Sun God, Ganapatya, worship of Ganesh, Shaiva, worship of Lord Shiva, worship of Kali, Vaishnava, worship of Vishnu. These are different paths to attain the supreme. This way, one Sanatani explained in the internet how much this information is true. So this Pancha Upasakaha, it is it's called, it is devised by the impersonalists. This is not a personalist, uh, our devotional line. Because they want to go into the ultimate uh, worship of the impersonal aspect, Brahman, to just worship the impersonal light is very difficult for the mind. As Krishna also said in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, so it says here, yeah, very troublesome, you know. Those who, for those whose mind are attached to the unmanifest, impersonal feature of the Supreme, advancement is very troublesome. To make progress in that discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied. So in order to get their mind fixed, so they recommend the worship of these five uh, personalities. Hmm? Worship of Surya, Worship of Ganesh, worship of Shiva, worship of Durga, and of course, worship of, uh, I don't know, worship of Vishnu, I guess. Hmm? So this kind of worship, Temporarily, they worship these demigods. Ultimately, they forsake this worship and they merge into the impersonal aspect. But all we know that I also explain in today's class, worship of demigods cannot bring you to the supreme destination. Yes. Despite the cultivated Vedic knowledge is unlimited in the worship of different demigods by the symptoms of Vedic mantra, demigod worship does not help one to understand the supreme powerful personality of Godhead. In fact, Lord Brahma says, This present form or any transcendental form expanded by the Supreme Personality of God is Sri Krishna is equally auspicious for all the universes. Since you have manifested this eternal personal form upon whom your devotees meditate, I offer my respectful obeisance unto you. Those who are destined to be dispatched on the path of hell, 
neglect your personal form uh, speculating on material topics so those who are dispatched those who are destined to dispatch to hell neglect the worship of a personal form see how if you worship all these other form is it brahma is saying you can go to hell So, Brahmaji, it's like a kind of Mayavadi kind of thing, right? All these five different kind of gods or something. Yeah, because they, they cannot concentrate their mind, no? So, they say you worship this. And after you get into Brahman, then you can forget about worshipping these gods, you know? Yeah? Those who engage in the worship demigod enter into the darkest region of ignorance and still more do so the worshippers of impersonal absolute. Hello? Hmm? Yes, bro, but uh, like why these things are they are in Vedas? Means if these are Mayavadi things, why this, these things are in Vedas? Not in the Vedas, I don't think so. This is the concoction of this impersonalist. Why is he says this? Huh? Show me the verse. Huh? Yes, he, he is not showing any bars, he's just saying in a video. Just yes, you cannot show the verse. Hmm? Yeah, yes, bro, no bars. Hmm? That's why they are, you know, great offenders. They cannot say anything. This guy is always talk speculating. No? Yeah? Well, what Vedas he studied? I'm also studying Vedas. Yeah? Correct? Yeah? Yes? Those who worship, those those whose intelligence has been stolen by material desire, surrender the demigod and follow particular rules and regulations of worship according to their own nature. A person who worships the demigods and give up Lord Vasudev is like a man who gives up the protection and mother for the shelter of a witch. Hello? Standa Purana. Hmm? Krishna himself said this is the wrong way. Anyone who thinks the Lord Vishnu and Damigon are on the same level is to be immediately considered rogue as far as spiritual understanding is concerned. For them, everything is the same one. Hmm? Okay, here. In the material consciousness, however, when one is situated in the mode of goodness, is subsided to pollution by the mode of passion and greed. When in the mode of goodness, is mixed with the mode of passion, one worship the sun god, Vivasavan. Uh? When the mode of goodness is mixed with the mode of ignorance, one worship Ganapati or Ganesh. When the mode of passion is mixed with the mode of ignorance, one worship Durga or Kali. Uh? When one is simply in the mode of ignorance, one becomes the devotee of Lord Shiva. Because Lord Shiva is the predominant deity of mode of ignorance within this material world. However, when one is completely free from the influence of the mode of material nature, one becomes a pure Vaishnava on the devotional platform. Hmm? Yes. You must understand all these things, you know, all these Mayavads are, they are speculators, they talk all rubbish, 
And when you are in the moods, how you can go to Krishna? You cannot go to Krishna if you are in the moods, goodness, passion, ignorance. You must transcend all these things. Then you come to pure goodness. Then only you can go to Krishna. You know? Yes, bro. Yes, I understand now. By his will, I create Lord Shiva, destroys any himself in the eternal form of personality of God and maintains everything. He is the powerful controller of these three energies. You understand? As the position of Krishna, he is controlling everything. You cannot speculate, you know, and try to go to Krishna by all this crazy method. That's not possible. Where in the Bhagavad Gita and the Bhagavad Krishna says, you can worship all this fire and speck and come to me. He just show me one verse. In fact, he says, it's discouraging. Demigod worship is wrong way. Yes? Yes, Sir. Yes. So you go and tell this, who this guy you're talking to? Tell him where you get this information. Huh? Hello? I don't know, bro. He's just saying that I get from Vedas. And ask him, you know, you write to him and ask him, <laughs> Bhagavad Gita Krishna say this is nonsense. Why are you saying all this? <laughs> huh? Yeah. yeah, it's nonsense actually. Yeah, yes. Well, you should ask him why you why you not questioning him. Huh? Correct. Yes, bro. <laughs> Any other questions? Spiritual life means a person who is representing Krishna must be able to be speaking the Shastra. He is representing God means he must speak what God says. Common sense. I cannot represent God and speak my nonsense. Does it make any sense? Hmm? Correct? Hello? So Prabhuji, like you just said that this philosophy who preach, this is Mayavadi philosophy, right? So like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu say, Mayavad Bhase Sunile Sarvanas. If you hear them, you will be finished. Why are you going and hearing them? Yes, bro. No, sorry, bro. I will not hear. <laughs> Your problem. And if you go and hear them and you cannot correct it, then you are a nonsense. You understand? Yes, I, I, I did not know. Sorry, I, I now, now understand what is true and what is not true. Yes, sorry. I, it says that a Vaishnava should not hear from the mouth of a non-devotee. It is like milk touched by the uh, mouth of a serpent. A Vaishnava mukat girnam. You should not go and hear these things from a non-devotee. Yes. Yes, bro. Right. Ah, so why are you doing that? Huh? Hello? Can you drink milk touched by the lips of a serpent? Hello? Will you do that? One more thing, Prabhuji, like all these demigods, they are affected by material modes or they are like pure satta, suddha satta state? As now we read, no, Lord Shiva in charge of ignorance, Durga is passion and ignorance, Ganesh is goodness and ignorance, Surya is goodness and... Yes, sorry, sorry. So they all are in that mode, no? Yes, bro. Like they themselves are in the mode. So, okay. 
So then how can you go and associate with them? Yes, bro, like I, I, I will reply that guy if I find him. Yes. Okay. And, uh... Correct. Yes, bro. How you can do that? It's very dangerous. Yes? Yes or not? Yes, bro. Yes, bro. Thank you, bro, for clearing my doubts. Thank you. Pray, Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself has warned us, you know, you don't go. Hmm? Hare Krishna Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisance. Is always Shishila Prabhupada. Prabhu, I have one question. May I ask? Yeah. So, Prabhu, these Mayavadis are also known as Gyanis. So, they take the Gyana Yoga as the topmost. And they also you know, take the indirect meaning of Bhagavad Gita and other scriptures. For example, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that Madhama Parama Mama, my Dhamma is uh, supreme. But they take Dhamma as light. Like in Sanskrit, Dhamma means also light. So they take the indirect meaning, like uh, they will say, you know, Dhamma means light, you will go to light. So they take the indirect meaning. So, and because they know the Sanskrit, so sometimes, you know, it becomes a little difficult to argue with them in terms of Sanskrit, the Sanskrit knowledge. Like they will easily turn the verses by Sanskrit knowledge. And uh, because they also take the indirect meaning. So in these cases, like how a devotee uh, can uh, defeat them, because uh, sometimes we see that, uh, you know, for a devotee, Sanskrit doesn't matter. Like uh, Bhakti is the topmost. But, uh, you know, when it, when it comes to argue with Mayavadis, so they can easily change by Sanskrit knowledge, like some, you know, Sharitik Bhasa or other, you know, Gita Bhasa also. So it can easily change the meaning completely. Okay, Krishna, if Krishna says that uh, to come to me, so they will change it like, you no, know, no, he says that to come to I. Like, Aham means they will take I, uh, I. They will not take that Krishna. So they take the always, uh, they, they, they take all, uh, the indirect meaning always. So in this case, how, how to uh, argue with them uh, in a way that uh, they, you know, like they will be smashed. Oh, you like, have to become very strong, no? Understand? Yes. If you don't know, then how you can go and argue? Correct? Mm -hmm. Krishna says, Sarva Dharma Parityaja Ma Mekam Sarana. He says, Surrender to me alone. Hmm? Correct? Yes, uh, actually, uh, like, uh, what should I say? What should I say? But, uh, like, um, Mayavadis, uh, they they actually say that, like, the last verse of, like, you know, uh, like, not last verse, but they say that this, Sarva Dharma Paritaja Mayakam Saram Baja, Aham Tok Sarva Vapaka Mokshasya Mi Masuja. So they take this Aham, or uh, this, when Krishna says that, uh, come to me, so they will, you know, change this verse indirectly. Like, they will say that, Mam also means I. So, you know, you know what? Um, because according to them, everything is para Brahman, only para Brahman, and uh, everyone is para Brahman. But out of ignorance, now we have come here. Although this is a false, actually false statement, because how para Brahman, you know, came into me. Krishna said in the Bhagavad Gita that I am the basis of this para Brahman, this Jyoti, this light. Hmm. Yes, that is also true. But actually, uh, Prabhu, like uh, it, all those, um, you know, although there are so much many verses against them. But somehow they change actually by the Sanskrit knowledge. I do not like, know perfectly. That's like, like they are trying to hide the personality of Krishna. You should be expert in explaining the personality of God. Because you are confused. Yes. Then how you will go there? You will become more confused. That's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has warned us, don't go to these people. In yes, fact, so, Chaitanya uh, Mahaprabhu was hmm. also avoiding them. He didn't want to go. Until, you know, in a situation where they, you know, he wanted to save his devotees, he went. You understand? Yes, so, yes, so, but, uh, like, uh, of course, we should not engage, like, of course, we should not associate with them. But um, if there is a situation, like, uh, not now, but if the situation to... Then you should uh, be like, also for... knowing, you should be also knowing how to defeat them. You have to learn. Yes. You have to train. Mm -hmm. training, you go, of course, you'll be confused. Yeah. Correct. He said you have to surrender to Krishna. Krishna means black. Huh? Hmm. You understand? Uh. That means you surrender to nobody. Dark, black, nothing. Huh? Uh -huh. Actually, like, indirectly they change uh, everything into I. Like they say, Parabrahman is everyone. So, yes, like, ultimately we have to speaking. stay Listen, uh, if God is speaking in the Bhagavad Gita, then who else is this referring to? 
No, don't mm, this, this is nonsense. If I'm telling you, are you telling me? And I say, no, no, I'm not listening to you. There's something else is coming from you. That's all. Huh? Huh. Yes, yes. That? Listen, you talk some more, yeah. I'll slap you. Huh? That's what you should say. <laughs> Prabhupada said, if anybody talk nonsense, beat him with shoes. Yes, Hello? definitely, because, yes, actually in uh, Bhagavad Gita 2.12, uh, Prabhupada in purport writes very you know, clearly that if Krishna is under Maya, so why why we should listen even? Why we should take Shastra seriously even? No, let him go and lift up Govardhan Hill, please. Let him do some <laughs> practical. Yes. Let me see, la, you, you talk so much, yeah? let me see you lift up some Govardhan Hill or you run around with the gopis or do something, no, let me see. Or show me your if universal form. Still, show me your universal form. So, yeah, Prabhupada also said that next day they cannot even control the nature's call. What about this Govardhan Hill or what about this? Listen, you must be learning how to smash them. Yes, you definitely. Huh? If you don't yes, know please. anything, can he will tell you anything and you get confused? Therefore, better you don't go. You understand? No, Prabhu. Yes, so actually, uh, well, like in personal level, I don't go, but um, you know, this social media thing, a lot of things come. So and that's social right. media, Sometimes. why you go to all this crazy side? Our side already got so many things to read. Huh? <laughs> no, because actually, I do not go, but in time, automatic you got, suggestions. You got a lot of time to go and see all the social news, is it? No time to read Prabhupada books. Huh? No, but actually, no, I, I I read Prabhupada books, but actually sometimes sometimes it happens that it comes automatically. So why are you going to my WhatsApp? It's clearly said in this word. You see, one should not hear anything about Krishna from a non Vaishnav. Yes, yes. Huh? Milk touched by the lips of a serpent has poisonous effect. Similarly, talks about Krishna given by a non Vaishnav is also poisonous. Hello. Yes, we are. Why are you going there? Actually, like uh, being honest, I I'm like uh, I have no interest to go there. But sometimes it happens like if I'm reading no, something in, uh, no, in social no, media. No, listen, there's no sometime happen. Social media doesn't just open up like that unless you go to the site. Listen, I also have computer and I also go to sites. I just know that automatically you open. Doesn't make sense. Hello. You should avoid doing it. Actually, you should avoid yeah. doing this thing, yeah? If you want to treasure yes, your spiritual life, you don't do these things. You understand? Yes, sir. yes. Next yeah. time I will be more careful about this. Yes, next time I will be more careful about this. Don't do this, you know, dangerous for your spiritual life. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. If spiritual life means following the instruction of the spiritual master. Yes? Yes, uh, 100%. Yes. yes. So, if Prabhupada is asking us to go to all these sites? No, no, definitely not. Then why are you doing that? I like my crazy mind, Prabhu. Crazy mind. Crazy mind. That's it. Now you need some slaps, you know. Oh, of course. You, need. you need some slaps, you know. That's it. What? Crazy mind. What else to do? Correct? Yes, so definitely. So, don't do it again, all right? Yes, so. I have one question. Who is this? Again, you are. You just asked this question, is it? Yes, why I have just asked. All right, you better be careful, boy, going to all this guy. Unless you are very expert, you can argue with them and defeat them. Oh, that's another thing, but I don't see that in you. Huh? Yes, why I still need some guidance, actually, yes. It is says very clearly you should avoid preaching to the faithless. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Do not speak this thing to those people who have no faith. Huh? Do you know or not? This confidential knowledge may never be explained to those who are not austere 
or devoted or engaged in devotional service, not to one who is envious of me. The Mayavadis are all envious of Krishna. Hello? Yes, Prabhu. Yes. Hmm? Yes, Prabhu. So you want to get into goodness, the next question is that by doing, uh, following austerities, uh, I've quoted that verse just now, So in this verse, you see here, tapo devyam putra kahayena. So when you do tapasya, then you come to the mode of goodness. So when you become purified, then you come to the pure goodness. See? Well, to better explain this, it's also here that you can understand better. Supreme Personality of Godhead say the three modes of material nature, namely goodness, passion, ignorance, pertain to material intelligence and not to the spirit soul. By development of goodness, material goodness, <clears throat> one can conquer the mode of passion and ignorance. And by cultivation of transcendental goodness, one may free oneself even from material goodness. So by taking to Krishna consciousness, you are propelled to the mode of transcendental goodness. You understand? <coughs> That's why you are introduced to the transcendental process. Learn how to chant, learn how to follow the four principles. Uh, by doing all this thing, you immediately come to the transcendental plane. When the living entity becomes strongly situated in the mode of goodness, then religious principle characteristic by devotional service to me become prominent. One can strengthen the mode of goodness by cultivating those things already situated in goodness and thus religious principles arise. So we are taught that you come to goodness, take up the process. And more and more you take up the process and get purified, then you come to the transcendental position. Uh, and also there's another verse it says here. One must conquer the mode of passion and ignorance by developing the mode of goodness and then one becomes detached from the mode of goodness by promoting oneself to the platform of Sutta Sattva. All this can be automatically be done. If one engages in the service of the spiritual master with faith and devotion, in this way one can conquer the influence of the modes of nature. So if you surrender to the spiritual master, Prabhupada, then you can also go beyond the moods. <coughs> hmm? Hmm? <coughs> yes. So you try to surrender, that's the best, easiest way to conquer the mode of passion and ignorance and come to goodness and transcendental goodness.
how can we advance in our spiritual life associating with the bodies? There is no other answers to that. By associating with the bodies, huh? One should learn how to associate the devotees of the Lord by gathering with them to chant the glories of the Lord. This process is most purifying. As the devotees thus develop their loving friendship, they feel mutual happiness and satisfaction, and by thus encouraging one another, they are able to give up material sense gratification with the cause of all sufferings. Yes, associating with the devotees. Yes, Prabhu. I also need to stop going to the it's crazy social media. Oh, okay, good. Hare Krishna. So I guess many of you have asked very interesting questions. I hope I helped you in some way explaining the answers from Prabhupada's books. So anybody has have anything else before we wrap up? Prabhu, I have one last question. Can I ask? Hmm. Prabhu, actually, uh, when I read Prabhupada's books, so sometimes I see that Prabhupada writes in his uh, books or in purport that aham or I means personality. Prabhu, like sometimes I get confused about this. Like uh, aham or I means personality, like how? Uh, can you please explain? When someone is speaking in Sanskrit, he will say aham, me. I am telling you. Understand? Achha. So as Prabhupada said, Krishna is saying to surrender to him. Correct? Yeah. Krishna is talking, right, to Arjuna, right? Oh, I said talking. Uh, yeah. So if Krishna is saying surrender to me, then why we should interpret that? Hmm. Yeah. Huh? Yes, when yes. something is not clear, you can interpret. But something is so clear, the Lord is saying very clear, he's standing in front of Arjuna and he's talking. Then why you say you don't surrender to Krishna, but somebody inside the body of Krishna? Can you speak like that? No. Then you must be crazy. Correct? Yeah, definitely. That's why we should not go to these people and listen to them, because they are envious of Krishna. You understand? Yes. Mm. Yes. Huh? Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Yes. So don't go, okay? <clears throat> yes. So, okay, I guess if you have no more questions, I will stop here. Thank you very much for coming on board. Thank you so much, Prabhu, for your kind association and answering our questions. Nice to be with all of you. Thank you again. All Thank well. you very much, Prabhu, for all. Hey,